Brought to you by wikivd.com Henry Kissinger Henry Alfred Kissinger is an American diplomat and political scientist who served as the United States Secretary of State and National Security Advisor under the presidential administrations of Richard Nixon and Gerald Ford. Born in Germany, Kissinger was a Jewish refugee who fled the Nazi regime with his family in 1938. He became National Security Advisor in 1969 and later concurrently United States Secretary of State in 1973 for his actions negotiating a ceasefire in Vietnam. Kissinger received the 1973 Nobel Peace Prize under controversial circumstances, with two members of the committee resigning in protest. Kissinger later sought unsuccessfully to return the prize after the ceasefire failed. A proponent of real politic, Kissinger played a prominent role in United States foreign policy between 1969 and 1977. During this period he pioneered the policy of détente with the Soviet Union, orchestrated the opening of relations with the People's Republic of China, and negotiated the Paris Peace Accords ending American involvement in the Vietnam War. Kissinger has also been associated with such controversial policies as CIA involvement in Chile and U.S. support for Pakistan despite the genocide during the Bangladesh War. After leaving government he formed Kissinger Associates, an international consulting firm. Kissinger has been a prolific author of books on diplomatic history and international relations, with over one dozen books authored. General opinion of Henry Kissinger is strongly divided, while some journalists, activists and human rights lawyers have condemned him as a war criminal. Several scholars have ranked him as the most effective U.S. Secretary of State since 1965. Since holding office his advice has been sought by world leaders including subsequent U.S. presidents. Early Life and Education Kissinger was born Heinz Alfred Kissinger in Firth, Bavaria, Germany in 1923, during the Weimar Republic to a family of German Jews. His father Louis Kissinger was a schoolteacher. His mother Paula Kissinger from Leutershausen was a homemaker. Kissinger has a younger brother Walter Kissinger. The surname Kissinger was adopted in 1817 by his great-great-grandfather Mayer Lobb after the Bavarian spa town of Bad Kissingen. As a youth, Heinz enjoyed playing soccer and played for the youth wing of his favorite club SPVGG Firth, which was one of the nation's best clubs at the time. In 1938 fleeing Nazi persecution, his family moved to London, England before arriving in New York on September 5th. Kissinger spent his high school years in the Washington Heights section of Upper Manhattan as part of the German-Jewish immigrant community that resided there at the time. Although Kissinger assimilated quickly into American culture, he never lost his pronounced German accent due to childhood shyness that made him hesitant to speak. Following his first year at George Washington High School, he began attending school at night and worked in a shaving brush factory during the day. Following high school, Kissinger enrolled in the City College of New York studying accounting. He excelled academically as a part-time student continuing to work while enrolled. His studies were interrupted in early 1943 when he was drafted into the U.S. Army. Army Experience Kissinger underwent basic training at Camp Croft in Spartanburg, South Carolina, on June 19, 1943. While stationed in South Carolina at the age of 20 years he became a naturalized U.S. citizen. The Army sent him to study engineering at Lafayette College, Pennsylvania, but the program was canceled and Kissinger was reassigned to the 84th Infantry Division there, he made the acquaintance of Fritz Kremer, a fellow Jewish immigrant from Germany who noted Kissinger's fluency in German and his intellect and arranged for him 
to be assigned to the military intelligence section of the division. Kissinger saw combat with the division and volunteered for hazardous intelligence duties. During the Battle of the Bulge, during the American advance into Germany Kissinger only a private was put in charge of the administration of the city of Krefeld owing to a lack of German speakers on the division's intelligence staff. Within eight days he had established a civilian administration. Kissinger was then reassigned to the counterintelligence corps with the rank of sergeant. He was given charge of a team in Hanover assigned to tracking down Gestapo offices and other saboteurs for which he was awarded the Bronze Star. In June 1945, Kissinger was made Commandant of the Bensheim Metro CIC Detachment Bergstrasse District of Hesse, with responsibility for denazification of the district. Although he possessed absolute authority and powers of arrest, Kissinger took care to avoid abuses against the local population by his command. In 1946 Kissinger was reassigned to teach at the European Command Intelligence School at Camp King and, as a civilian employee following his separation from the army continued to serve in this role. Academic career Henry Kissinger received his A.B. degree summa cum laude Phi Beta Kappa in political science from Harvard College in 1950 where he lived in Adams House and studied under William Yandel Elliott. He received his M.A. and Ph.D. degrees at Harvard University in 1951 and 1954 respectively. In 1952 while still a graduate student at Harvard he served as a consultant to the director of the Psychological Strategy Board. His doctoral dissertation was titled Peace, Legitimacy and the Equilibrium. Kissinger remained at Harvard as a member of the faculty in the Department of Government and with Robert R. Bowie, co-founded the Center for International Affairs in 1958 where he served as associate director. In 1955 he was a consultant to the National Security Council's Operations Coordinating Board. During 1955 and 1956 he was also study director in nuclear weapons and foreign policy. At the Council on Foreign Relations, he released his book Nuclear Weapons and Foreign Policy the following year. From 1956 to 1958 he worked for the Rockefeller Brothers Fund as director of its Special Studies Project. He was director of the Harvard Defense Studies Program between 1958 and 1971. He was also director of the Harvard International Seminar between 1951 and 1971. Outside of academia he served as a consultant to several government agencies and think tanks including the Operations Research Office, the Arms Control and Disarmament Agency, Department of State and the Rand Corporation. Keen to have a greater influence on U.S. foreign policy, Kissinger became foreign policy advisor to the presidential campaigns of Nelson Rockefeller supporting his bids for the Republican nomination in 1960-1964 and 1968. After Richard Nixon won the presidency in 1968 he made Kissinger national security advisor. Foreign policy Kissinger served as national security advisor and secretary of state under President Richard Nixon and continued as secretary of state under Nixon's successor Gerald Ford. On Nixon's last full day in office in the meeting where he informed Ford of his intention to resign the next day. He advised Ford that he felt it was very important that he keep Kissinger in his new administration, to which Ford agreed, a proponent of real politic. Kissinger played a dominant role in United States foreign policy between 1969 and 1977. In that period he extended the policy of détente. This policy led to a significant relaxation in the U.S.-Soviet tensions and played a crucial role in 1971 talks with Chinese Premier Zhou Enlai. 
The talks concluded with a rapprochement between the United States and the People's Republic of China and the formation of a new strategic anti-Soviet Sino-American alignment. He was jointly awarded the 1973 Nobel Peace Prize with Le THC though for helping to establish a ceasefire in U.S. withdrawal from Vietnam. The ceasefire, however, was not durable. Though declined to accept the award and Kissinger appeared deeply ambivalent about it. As national security advisor, in 1974 Kissinger directed the much-debated National Security Study Memorandum 200. Date on to the opening to China As national security advisor under Nixon, Kissinger pioneered the policy of détente. With the Soviet Union seeking a relaxation in tensions between the two superpowers, as a part of this strategy he negotiated the Strategic Arms Limitation Talks and the Anti-Ballistic Missile Treaty with Leonid Brezhnev, General Secretary of the Soviet Communist Party. Negotiations about strategic disarmament were originally supposed to start under the Johnson administration but were postponed in protest upon the invasion by Warsaw Pact troops of Czechoslovakia in August 1968. Kissinger sought to place diplomatic pressure on the Soviet Union. He made two trips to the People's Republic of China in July and October 1971 to confer with Premier Zhou Enlai, then in charge of Chinese foreign policy. According to Kissinger's book The White House Years and On China the first secret China trip was arranged through Pakistani and Romanian diplomatic and presidential involvement as there were no direct communication channels between the states. His trips paved the way for the groundbreaking 1972 summit between Nixon Zhou and Communist Party of China Chairman Mao Zedong as well as the formalization of relations between the two countries, ending 23 years of diplomatic isolation and mutual hostility. The result was the formation of a tacit strategic anti-Soviet alliance between China and the United States. While Kissinger's diplomacy led to economic and cultural exchanges between the two sides, and the establishment of liaison offices in the Chinese and American capitals, with serious implications for Indo-Chinese matters full normalization of relations with the People's Republic of China would not occur until 1979, because the Watergate scandal overshadowed the latter years of the Nixon presidency and because the United States continued to recognize the government of Taiwan. In September 1989, the Wall Street Journal's John Fialka disclosed that Kissinger took a direct economic interest in U.S.-China relations in March 1989 with the establishment of China Ventures Inc., a Delaware Limited partnership of which he was chairman of the board and chief executive officer. A $75 million investment in a joint venture with the Communist Party government's primary commercial vehicle at the time, China International Trust. Board members were major clients of Kissinger Associates. Kissinger was criticized for not disclosing his role in the venture when called upon by ABC's Peter Jennings to comment the morning after the June 4, 1989 Tiananmen crackdown. Kissinger's position was generally supportive of Deng Xiaoping's clearance of the square, and he opposed economic sanctions. Vietnam War Kissinger's involvement in Indochina started prior to his appointment as National Security Advisor to Nixon. While still at Harvard, he had worked as a consultant on foreign policy to both the White House and State Department. Kissinger says that in August 1965, Henry Cabot Lodge, Jr., an old friend serving as ambassador to Saigon had asked me to visit Vietnam as his consultant. I toured Vietnam first for two weeks in October and November 1965 again. 
for about 10 days in July 1966 and a third time for a few days in October 1966. Lodge gave me a free hand to look into any subject of my choice. He became convinced of the meaninglessness of military victories in Vietnam, unless they brought about a political reality that could survive our ultimate withdrawal. In a 1967 peace initiative he would mediate between Washington and Hanoi. Nixon had been elected in 1968 on the promise of achieving peace with honor and ending the Vietnam War. In office and assisted by Kissinger, Nixon implemented a policy of Vietnamization that aimed to gradually withdraw U.S. troops while expanding the combat role of the South Vietnamese Army so that it would be capable of independently defending its government against the National Front for the liberation of South Vietnam, a communist guerrilla organization and North Vietnamese Army. Kissinger played a key role in bombing Cambodia to disrupt PAVN and Viet Cong units launching raids into South Vietnam from within Cambodia's borders and resupplying their forces by using the Ho Chi Minh Trail and other routes as well as the 1970 Cambodian incursion and subsequent widespread bombing of Khmer Rouge targets in Cambodia. The bombing campaign contributed to the chaos of the Cambodian Civil War, which saw the forces of leader Lon Nol unable to retain foreign support to combat the growing Khmer Rouge insurgency that would overthrow him in 1975. Documents uncovered from the Soviet archives after 1991 reveal that the North Vietnamese invasion of Cambodia in 1970 was launched at the explicit request of the Khmer Rouge and negotiated by Pol Pot's then second-in-command Nguyen Chi. The American bombing of Cambodia resulted in 40,150,000 deaths from 1969 to 1973 including at least 5,000 civilians. Kissinger himself said there were about 50,000 civilian casualties in the bombing. Pol Pot biographer David P. Chandler argues that the bombing had the effect the Americans wanted, it broke the communist encirclement of Phnom Penh. However, Ben Kinnan and Taylor Owen suggest that the bombs drove ordinary Cambodians into the arms of the Khmer Rouge a group that seemed initially to have slim prospects of revolutionary success. Along with North Vietnamese Politburo member Le Duc Tho, Kissinger was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize on December 10, 1973, for their work in negotiating the ceasefires contained in the Paris Peace Accords on ending the war and restoring peace in Vietnam signed the previous January. According to Erwin Abrams, this prize was the most controversial to date. For the first time in the history of the Peace Prize, two members left the Nobel Committee in protest, though rejected the award, telling Kissinger that peace had not been restored in South Vietnam. Kissinger wrote to the Nobel Committee that he accepted the award with humility and donated the entire proceeds to the children of American service members killed and missing in action in Indochina. After the fall of Saigon in 1975, Kissinger attempted to return the award. Bangladesh War Under Kissinger's guidance, the United States government supported Pakistan in the Bangladesh Liberation War in 1971. Kissinger was particularly concerned about the expansion of Soviet influence in South Asia as a result of a treaty of friendship recently signed by India and the USSR and sought to demonstrate to the People's Republic of China the value of a tacit alliance with the United States. Kissinger sneered at people who bleed for the dying Bengalis and ignored the first telegram from the United States Consul General in East Pakistan Archer K. Blood and 20 members of his staff, which informed the U.S. that their allies West Pakistan were undertaking in Blood's words a selective genocide. In the second more famous Blood telegram the word genocide was again used.
to describe the events and further that with its continuing support for West Pakistan the U.S. government had evidenced moral bankruptcy as a direct response to the dissent against U.S. policy Kissinger and Nixon ended Archer Blood's tenure as United States Consul General in East Pakistan and put him to work in the State Department's personnel office. Henry Kissinger had also come under fire for private comments he made to Nixon during the Bangladesh-Pakistan war in which he described Indian Prime Minister Indira Gandhi as a bitch and a witch. He also said the Indians are bastards shortly before the war. Kissinger has since expressed his regret over the comments. Israeli policy and Soviet Jewry According to notes taken by H.R. Haldeman, Nixon ordered his aides to exclude all Jewish Americans from policymaking on Israel, including Kissinger. One note quotes Nixon as saying, Get K. Kissinger out of the play, hey, candle it. In 1973, Kissinger did not feel the pressing the Soviet Union concerning the plight of Jews being persecuted there was in the interest of U.S. foreign policy. In conversation with Nixon shortly after a meeting with Golda Meir on March 1, 1973, Kissinger stated, The emigration of Jews from the Soviet Union is not an objective of American foreign policy. And if they put Jews into gas chambers in the Soviet Union it is not an American concern. Maybe a humanitarian concern. Kissinger argued, however. 1973 Yom Kippur War Documents show that Kissinger delayed telling President Richard Nixon about the start of the Yom Kippur in 1973 to keep him from interfering. On October 6, 1973, the Israelis informed Kissinger about the attack at 6 a.m. Kissinger waited nearly three and a half hours before he informed Nixon. According to Kissinger, in an interview in November 2013 he was notified at 6.30 a.m. that war was imminent, and his urgent calls to the Soviets and Egyptians were ineffective. He says Golda Meir's decision not to preempt was wise and reasonable, balancing the risk of Israel looking like the aggressor and Israel's actual ability to strike within such a brief span of time. The war began on October 6, 1973 when Egypt and Syria attacked Israel. Kissinger published lengthy telephone transcripts from this period in the 2002 book Crisis, on October 12 under Nixon's direction, and against Kissinger's initial advice while Kissinger was on his way to Moscow. To discuss conditions for a ceasefire, Nixon sent a message to Brezhnev giving Kissinger full negotiating authority. Israel regained the territory it lost in the early fighting and gained new territories from Syria and Egypt including land in Syria east of the previously captured Golan Heights and additionally on the western bank of the Suez Canal. Although they did lose some territory on the eastern side of the Suez Canal that had been in Israeli hands since the end of the Six-Day War, Kissinger pressured the Israelis to cede some of the newly captured land back to its Arab neighbors contributing to the first phases of Israeli-Egyptian non-aggression. The move saw a warming in U.S.-Egyptian relations bitter since the 1950s as the country moved away from its former independent stance and into a close partnership with the United States. The peace was finalized in 1978 when U.S. President Jimmy Carter mediated the Camp David Accords, during which Israel returned the Sinai Peninsula in exchange for an Egyptian peace agreement that included the recognition of the State of Israel. Turkish Invasion of Cyprus Following a period of steady relations between the U.S. government and the Greek military regime after 1967, Secretary of State Kissinger was faced with a coup by the Greek junta and the Turkish invasion of Cyprus in July and August 1974. 
In an August 1974 edition of the New York Times it was revealed that Kissinger and State Department were informed in advance Omicron F the impending coup by the Greek junta in Cyprus. Indeed, according to the journalist, the official version of events as told by the State Department was that it felt it had to warn the Greek military regime not to carry out the coup. The warning had been delivered by July 9 according to repeated assurances from its Athens services that is the U.S. Embassy and the American Ambassador Henry J. Tasker himself. Ioannis Zygdysh, then a Greek MP for Center Union and former minister, stated in an Athenian newspaper that the Cyprus crisis will become Kissinger's Watergate. Zygdysh also stressed, not only did Kissinger know about the coup for the overthrow of Archbishop Makarios before July 15, he also encouraged it. If he did not instigate it, Kissinger was a target of anti-American sentiment which was a significant feature of Greek public opinion. At the time, particularly among young people, viewing the U.S. role in Cyprus as negative. In a demonstration by students in Heraklion Crete, soon after the second phase of the Turkish invasion in August 1974 slogans such as Kissinger, Murderer Americans Get Out No to Partition and Cyprus is No Vietnam were heard. Some years later Kissinger expressed the opinion that the Cyprus issue was resolved in 1974, a position very similar to that held by Turkish Prime Minister Bülent Esavit, who had ordered the invasion. Latin American Policy the United States continued to recognize and maintain relationships with non-left-wing governments democratic and authoritarian alike. John F. Kennedy's alliance for progress was ended in 1973. In 1974 negotiations about a new settlement over the Panama Canal started. They eventually led to the Torrijos Carter Treaties and the Hounding over of the canal to Panamanian control. Kissinger initially supported the normalization of United States-Cuba relations broken since 1961. However, he quickly changed his mind and followed Kennedy's policy. After the involvement of the Cuban Revolutionary Armed Forces in the independence struggles in Angola and Mozambique, Kissinger said that unless Cuba withdrew its forces relations would not be normalized. Cuba refused. Intervention in Chile Chilean Socialist Party presidential candidate Salvador Allende was elected by a plurality of 36.2% in 1970 causing serious concern in Washington, D.C. due to his openly socialist and pro-Cuban politics. The Nixon administration, with Kissinger's input, authorized the Central Intelligence Agency to encourage a military coup that would prevent Allen's inauguration, but the plan was not successful. United States-Chile relations remained frosty during Salvador Allen's tenure, following the complete nationalization of the partially U.S.-owned copper mines and the Chilean subsidiary of the U.S.-based ITT Corporation as well as other Chilean businesses. The U.S. claimed that the Chilean government had greatly undervalued fair compensation for the nationalization by subtracting what it deemed excess profits. Therefore, the U.S. implemented economic sanctions against Chile. The CIA also provided funding for the mass anti-government strikes in 1972 and 1973, and extensive black propaganda in the newspaper El Mercurio. The most expeditious way to prevent Allende from assuming office was somehow to convince the Chilean Congress to confirm Jorge Alessandri as the winner of the election. Once elected by the Congress, Alessandri, a party to the plot through intermediaries, was prepared to resign his presidency within a matter of days so that new elections could be held. This first non-military approach to stopping Allende was called the Trachy approach. The CIA's second approach, 
The Track 2 approach was designed to encourage a military overthrow. On September 11, 1973, Allende died during a military coup launched by Army Commander-in-Chief Augusto Pinochet, who became president. A document released by the CIA in 2000 titled CIA Activities in Chile revealed that the United States acting through the CIA actively supported the military junta after the overthrow of Allende, and that it made many of Pinochet's officers into paid contacts of the CIA or U.S. military. In 1976 Orlando Letelier, a Chilean opponent of the Pinochet regime, was assassinated in Washington, D.C. with a car bomb. Previously Kissinger had helped secure his release from prison, and had chosen to cancel a letter to Chile warning them against carrying out any political assassinations. The U.S. ambassador to Chile David H. Popper said that Pinochet might take as an insult any inference that he was connected with assassination plots. It has been confirmed that Pinochet directly ordered the assassination. This murder was part of Operation Condor, a covered program of political repression and assassination carried out by Southern Cone nations that Kissinger has been accused of being involved in. On September 10, 2001, the family of Chilean General Rene Schneider filed a suit against Kissinger, accusing him of collaborating in arranging Schneider's kidnapping, which resulted in his death. According to phone records, Kissinger claimed to have turned off the operation. However, the CIA claimed that no such stand down order was ever received, and he and Nixon later joked that an incompetent CIA had struggled to kill Schneider. A subsequent congressional investigation found that the CIA was not directly involved in Schneider's death. The case was later dismissed by a U.S. district court citing separation of powers. The decision to support a coup of the Chilean government to prevent Dr. Allende from coming to power and the means by which the United States government sought to affect that goal. Implicate policymakers in the murky realm of foreign affairs and national security best left to the political branches. Decades later the CIA admitted its involvement in the kidnapping of General Schneider, but not his murder and subsequently paid the group responsible for his death $35,000 to keep the prior contact secret maintain the goodwill of the group and for humanitarian reasons. Argentina Kissinger took a similar line as he had toward Chile when the Argentinian military led by Jorge Videla toppled the elected government of Isabel Perón in 1976 with a process called the National Reorganization Process by the military with which they consolidated power launching brutal reprisals and disappearances against political opponents. During a meeting with Argentinian Foreign Minister César Augusto Gazzetti, Kissinger assured him that the United States was an ally but urged him to get back to normal procedures quickly before the U.S. Congress reconvened and had a chance to consider sanctions. According to declassified State Department files, Kissinger also attempted to thwart the Carter administration's efforts to halt the mass killings by the 1976-83 military dictatorship. Rhodesia In September 1976, Kissinger was actively involved in negotiations regarding the Rhodesian Bush. War. Kissinger, along with South Africa's Prime Minister John Vorster, pressured Rhodesian Prime Minister Ian Smith to hasten the transition to black majority rule in Rhodesia, with FRELIMO in control of Mozambique, and even South Africa withdrawing its support. Rhodesia's isolation was nearly complete. According to Smith's autobiography, Kissinger told Smith of Mrs. Kissinger's admiration for him. But Smith stated that he thought Kissinger was asking him to sign Rhodesia's death certificate. Kissinger bringing the weight of the United States and corralling other relevant parties 
to put pressure on Rhodesia hastened the end of minority rule. East Timor The Portuguese decolonization process brought U.S. attention to the former Portuguese colony of East Timor which lies within the Indonesian archipelago and declared its independence in 1975. Indonesian President Suharto was a strong U.S. ally in Southeast Asia and began to mobilize the Indonesian army preparing to annex the nascent state which had become increasingly dominated by the popular leftist Fretilin party. In December 1975 Suharto discussed the invasion plans during a meeting with Kissinger and President Ford in the Indonesian capital of Jakarta. Both Ford and Kissinger made clear that U.S. relations with Indonesia would remain strong and that it would not object to the proposed annexation. They only wanted it done fast, and proposed that it be delayed until after they had returned to Washington. Accordingly, Suharto delayed the operation for one day. Finally on December 7, Indonesian forces invaded the former Portuguese colony. U.S. arms sales to Indonesia continued and Suharto went ahead with the annexation plan. According to Ben Kinnan, the invasion and occupation resulted in the deaths of nearly a quarter of the Timorese population from 1975 to 1981. Cuba In February 1976 Kissinger considered launching air strikes against ports and military installations in Cuba as well as deploying marine battalions based at the U.S. Navy base at Guantanamo Bay in retaliation for Cuban President Fidel Castro's decision in late 1975 to send troops to Angola to help the newly independent nation fend off attacks from South Africa and right-wing guerrillas. Later roles Kissinger left office when Democrat Jimmy Carter defeated Republican Gerald Ford in the 1976 presidential elections. Kissinger continued to participate in policy groups such as the Trilateral Commission and to maintain political consulting, speaking and writing engagements. Shortly after Kissinger left office in 1977 he was offered an endowed chair at Columbia University. There was significant student opposition to the appointment, which eventually became a subject of wide media commentary. Columbia cancelled the appointment as a result. Kissinger was then appointed to Georgetown University's Center for Strategic and International Studies. He taught at Georgetown's Edmund Walsh School of Foreign Service for several years in the late 1970s. In 1982, with the help of a loan from the international banking firm of E.M. Warburg, Pinkis & Company, Kissinger founded a consulting firm Kissinger Associates, and is a partner in affiliate Kissinger McClarty Associates with Mac McClarty, former chief of staff to President Bill Clinton. He also serves on the board of directors of Hollinger International, a Chicago-based newspaper group and as of March 1999 was a director of Gulfstream Aerospace. From 1995 to 2001 Kissinger served on the board of directors for Freeport McMurrin, a multinational copper and gold producer with significant mining and milling operations in Papua. Indonesia. In February 2000, then President of Indonesia Abdur Rahman Wahid appointed Kissinger as a political advisor. He also serves as an honorary advisor to the United States Azerbaijan Chamber of Commerce. From 2000 to 2006, Kissinger served as chairman of the Board of Trustees of Eisenhower Fellowships. In 2006, upon his departure from Eisenhower Fellowships, he received the Dwight D. Eisenhower Medal for Leadership and Service. In November 2002, he was appointed by President George W. Bush to chair the newly established National Commission on Terrorist Attacks upon the United States to investigate the September 11 attacks. Kissinger stepped down as chairman on December 13, 
2002 rather than reveal his business client list. When queried about potential conflicts of interest, Kissinger, along with William Perry, Sam Nunn, and George Shultz, has called upon governments to embrace the vision of a world free of nuclear weapons, and in three Wall Street Journal op-eds proposed an ambitious program of urgent steps to that end. The four have created the Nuclear Security Project to advance this agenda. In 2010, the four were featured in a documentary film entitled Nuclear Tipping Point. The film is a visual and historical depiction of the ideas laid forth in the Wall Street Journal op-eds, and reinforces their commitment to a world without nuclear weapons in the steps that can be taken to reach that goal. On November 17, 2016 Kissinger met with then-President-elect Donald Trump, during which they discussed global affairs. Kissinger also met with President Trump at the White House in May 2017. Yugoslav Wars In several articles of his and interviews that he gave during the Yugoslav Wars, he criticized the United States policies in Southeast Europe among other things, for the recognition of Bosnia and Herzegovina as a sovereign state, which he described as a foolish act. Most importantly he dismissed the notion of Serbs and Croats for that part being aggressors are separatists saying that they can't be separating from something that has never existed. In addition, he repeatedly warned the West of inserting itself into a conflict that has its roots at least hundreds of years back in time, and said that the West would do better if it allowed the Serbs and Croats to join the respective countries. Kissinger shared similarly critical views on Western involvement in Kosovo. In particular, he held a disparaging view of the Rambouillet Agreement. However, as the Serbs did not accept the Rambouillet text and NATO bombings started he opted for a continuation of the bombing as NATO's credibility was now at stake, but dismissed the use of ground forces claiming that it was not worth it. Iraq. In 2006 it was reported in the book State of Denial by Bob Woodward that Kissinger met regularly with President George W. Bush and Vice President Dick Cheney to offer advice on the Iraq War. Kissinger confirmed in recorded interviews with Woodward that the advice was the same as he had given in a column in the Washington Post on August 12, 2005, victory over the insurgency is the only meaningful exit strategy. In an interview on the BBC's Sunday AM on November 19, 2006, Kissinger was asked whether there is any hope left for a clear military victory in Iraq, and responded if you mean by military victory, an Iraqi government that can be established and whose writ runs across the whole country that gets the civil war under control, and sectarian violence under control in a time period that the political processes of the democracies will support, I don't believe that is possible. I think we have to redefine the course, but I don't believe that the alternative is between military victory as it had been defined previously a total withdrawal. In an April 3, 2008 interview with Peter Robinson of the Hoover Institution, Kissinger reiterated that even though he supported the 2003 invasion of Iraq he thought that the George W. Bush administration rested too much of its case for war on Saddam's supposed weapons of mass destruction. Robinson noted that Kissinger had criticized the administration for invading with too few troops, for disbanding the Iraqi army and for mishandling relations with certain allies. India Kissinger said in April 2008 that India has parallel objectives to the United States, and he called it an ally of the U.S. China. Kissinger was present at the opening ceremony of the 2008 Beijing Summer Olympics. In 2011, Kissinger published on China chronicling the evolution of Sino-American relations, 
and laying out the challenges to a partnership of genuine strategic trust between the U.S. and China. Iran Kissinger's position on this issue of U.S.-Iran talks was reported by the Tehran Times to be that any direct talks between the U.S. and Iran on issues such as the nuclear dispute would be most likely to succeed if they first involved only diplomatic staff and progressed to the level of Secretary of State before the heads of state meet. In 2016 Kissinger said, I would not have made the agreement, but we will not get a great deal out of ending it now. And that the biggest challenge facing the Middle East is the potential domination of the region by an Iran that is both imperial and jihadist. 2014 Ukrainian Crisis On March 5, 2014 The Washington Post published an op-ed piece by Kissinger, 11 days before the Crimean referendum on whether Autonomous Republic of Crimea should officially rejoin in Ukraine or join neighboring Russia. In it he attempted to balance the Ukrainian, Russian, and Western desires for a functional state. He made four main points, Kissinger also wrote, The West speaks Ukrainian, the East speaks mostly Russian. Any attempt by one wing of Ukraine to dominate the other, as has been the pattern, would lead eventually to civil war or breakup. Following the publication of his book titled World Order, Kissinger participated in an interview with Charlie Rose and updated his position on Ukraine which he sees as a possible geographical mediator between Russia and the West. In a question he posed to himself, for illustration regarding reconceiving policy regarding Ukraine, Kissinger stated, If Ukraine is considered an outpost, then the situation is that its eastern border is the NATO strategic line, and NATO will be within 200 miles of Volgograd. That will never be accepted by Russia. On the other hand, if the Russian Western Line is at the border of Poland, Europe will be permanently disquieted. The strategic objective should have been to see whether one can build Ukraine as a bridge between East and West, and whether one can do it as a kind of a joint effort. In December 2016, Kissinger advised then-president-elect Donald Trump to accept Crimea as a part of Russia in an attempt to secure a rapprochement between the United States and Russia, whose relations soured as a result of the Crimean crisis. Public perception At the height of Kissinger's prominence many commented on his wit. In February 1972, at the Washington Press Club annual congressional dinner, Kissinger mocked his reputation as a secret swinger. The insight, power is the ultimate aphrodisiac is widely attributed to him. Although Kissinger was paraphrasing Napoleon Bonaparte, some scholars have ranked Kissinger as the most effective U.S. Secretary of State in the 50 years. To 2015, a number of activists and human rights lawyers however have sought his prosecution for alleged war crimes. According to historian and Kissinger biographer Niall Ferguson, however, accusing Kissinger alone of war crimes requires a double standard because nearly all the secretaries of state and nearly all the presidents have taken similar actions. Kissinger was interviewed in Backdoor Channels, The Price of Peace, a documentary examining the underpinnings of the 1979 peace treaty between Israel and Egypt. In the film, Kissinger revealed how close he felt the world came to nuclear war. During the 1973 Yom Kippur war launched by Egypt and Syria against Israel, in in-type entries, Greater than attempts have been made to attach liability to Kissinger for or injustices in American foreign policy during his tenure in government. In September 2001, relatives and survivors of General René Schneider, the former head of the Chilean General Staff, commenced civil proceedings in federal court in Washington, D.C. and in April 2002 a petition for Kissinger's arrest was filed in the High Court in London.
by human rights campaigner Peter Tatchell citing the destruction of civilian populations and the environment in Indochina during the years 1969-75. Both suits were determined to lack legal foundation and were dismissed before trial. British-American journalist and author Christopher Hitchens authored The Trial of Henry Kissinger in which Hitchens calls for the prosecution of Kissinger for war crimes for crimes against humanity and for offenses against common or customary or international law including conspiracy to commit murder, kidnap and torture. Critics on the right such as Ray Takey have faulted Kissinger for his role in the Nixon administration's opening to China and secret negotiations with North Vietnam. Takey writes that while rapprochement with China was a worthy goal the Nixon administration failed to achieve any meaningful concessions from Chinese officials in return as China continued to support North Vietnam and various revolutionary forces throughout the Third World nor does there appear to be even a remote indirect connection between Nixon and Kissinger's diplomacy and the communist leadership's decision after Mao's bloody rule to move away from a communist economy towards state capitalism. On Vietnam, Takey claims that Kissinger's negotiations with Le Duc though were intended only to secure a decent interval between America's withdrawal and South Vietnam's collapse. Johannes Kajua offers a more positive assessment of Nixon and Kissinger's strategy arguing that the two men simultaneously maintained a plan A of further supporting Saigon and a plan B of shielding Washington should their maneuvers prove futile. According to Kajira, the decent interval concept has been largely misrepresented in that Nixon and Kissinger sought to gain time make the North turn inward and create a perpetual equilibrium rather than acquiescing in the collapse of South Vietnam but the strength of the anti-war movement and the sheer unpredictability of events in Indochina compelled them to prepare for the possibility that South Vietnam might collapse despite their best efforts. Kadura concludes without Nixon Kissinger and Ford's clever use of triangular diplomacy. The Soviets and the Chinese could have been tempted into a far more aggressive stance following the U.S. defeat in Indochina than actually occurred. In 2011, Chimerica Media released an interview-based documentary titled Kissinger in which Kissinger reflects on some of his most important and controversial decisions. During his tenure as Secretary of State, Kissinger's record was brought up during the 2016 Democratic Party presidential primaries. Hillary Clinton had cultivated a close relationship with Kissinger describing him as a friend and a source of counsel. During the Democratic primary debates Clinton touted Kissinger's praise for her record as Secretary of State. In response, candidate Bernie Sanders issued a critique of Kissinger's foreign policy declaring, I am proud to say that Henry Kissinger is not my friend. I will not take advice from Henry Kissinger. Family and personal life Kissinger married Anne Fleischer in 1949. They had two children Elizabeth and David, and divorced in 1964. Ten years later he married Nancy McGuinness. They now live in Kent, Connecticut, and in New York City. Kissinger's son David Kissinger served as an executive with NBC Universal before becoming head of Conaco Conan O'Brien's production company. Kissinger described diplomacy as his favorite game in a 1973 interview. Soccer Kissinger was described as one of the most influential people in the growth of soccer in the United States. Kissinger was named chairman of the North American Soccer League Board of Directors in 1978. Since his childhood Kissinger has been a fan of his hometown soccer club SPVGG Gruta Firth. Even during his time in office he was informed about the team's results by the German embassy every Monday morning. 
He is an honorary member with lifetime season tickets. In September 2012 Kissinger attended a home game in which SPVGG grew to Firth lost 0-2 against Schalke after promising years ago he would attend a grew to Firth home game if they were promoted to the Bundesliga, the top football league in Germany from the two. Bundesliga. Kissinger is an honorary member of the German soccer club FC Bayern München. Brought to you by Wikivd.com. Would you like to know more?